Great. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. This is another one of my series in interviews with subject matter experts all over the country. My name is Cindy McDonald, and I'm very proud and glad to have with me today Ethan Sawyer, who's also known as the Essay Guy. So, Ethan, we're welcome. We're glad to have you here today. Thank you. It's it's even college essay guy because essay guy sometimes people don't find me. But <laughs> ah, good, 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 good. The college essay guy. That's that's even more um, indicative of what we're talking about. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get to become the college essay guy? What was your background and what's your experience? Great. Yeah. So, the um, the thirty second version is. I, when I graduated college, was really intent on becoming a screenwriter. And I'd moved to LA with my best friend to, uh, to basically study screenwriting. He was at USC and I was stealing his USC education, uh, learning a bunch about screenplays and working with him. But during the day, I was working with students on their essays and bringing in, um, you know, college es or bringing in screenwriting to the college essay process and found that I was just so much more fulfilled and you know, like revved up by like helping students tell their stories. So I just started doing that more and more and it, it grew and grew and I started a blog and started helping more students, started helping counselors. And some of the techniques that I was discovering working with my students, especially in workshops were really resonating. So um, I thought, well, I should do this instead. So um, I ended up, uh, you know, leaving screenwriting altogether. And, and now this is, you know, this, and I, I do a little bit of voice acting on the side um to uh kind of you know make pay the bills but you know now this is my full-time thing and that the, the other answer to this question is like i became college essay guy when a friend of mine said hey you could be like the she was trying to find a name for it and she was like you could be like the college essay jesus and i was like whoa i don't know if i like that name and i don't know if that would show up in search terms uh, but i could be like the guy maybe so I, I like googled college essay guy and nobody had taken the url so i was like okay there we go i'll be that guy so that's perfect that's perfect well i know you were working you were tutoring for a company as well right yeah. and um so that they all tie in together oh, that's for sure. yeah the other part of my bio i guess is that I, I taught for like 10 years um through this company called elite uh, prep and taught sat prep wrote curriculum uh trained teachers wrote practice sats like some students that i would meet were like oh i wrote i helped write the test that you took and they would kind of be freaked out by that but so lots of years in i would say six years in curriculum writing and um yeah it's all kind of gone around the writing teaching counseling realm i'd say and um yeah so what are colleges you've talked with lots of colleges i know you present with a lot of colleges and um, this is your passion, right, you know, that you're working with. So what do colleges say they are really looking for in a student's essay? Oh. So sometimes I hear a counselor, or I hear admission counselors say, I'm just looking to see, you know, information. You know, I'm looking to learn new things about the student. And sometimes I hear, I want to know if the student can write. And so I don't think there's a like a one answer to this. I think that it's sometimes counselors or their admission officers are really looking for writing ability. Sometimes, what are you besides the numbers? And so I say, you know, on a basic level, they're looking for, you know, who is a student? What is the student going to bring uh, to a college campus? Um, you know, and can the student write? I think that's important too. The way that I like to break it down is the four qualities I think go into a great essay are core values, which are, you know, what do you stand for? Uh, what are you willing to fight for? And that's a version of the answer to the question, you know, what are you bringing to a college campus? But I think of that as, as information, as, as like sort of internal, emotional, psychological information, not facts about who you've been, but, you know, what, who you are kind of at your, at your core. I think it's important to have uh, vulnerability, some element of, because we don't get vulnerability from the rest of the application. Now, vulnerability can come out in a lot of different ways. It could be you know, speaking about a, something you're passionate about and not apologizing for it. Or it could be, you know, addressing something that you, you know, may not, you know, talk to people often about. Um, but it's certainly, again, not seen from the rest of your application. Um, I think uh, craft is important so that we really get a sense that you really worked on the application and spent some time working on it. And then moments of insight, what I call so what moments, moments where we get to see how your brain works so that there's like something that you tell us and then you tell us something about that thing that, that's, that's beyond the obvious. 
So, yeah, those, those are what I think. I, and, and actually, I got that not from talking to admissions counselors, but looking at great essays that the admissions counselors loved and trying to sort of piece out, well, what are they, what's, to, what's going well here? And I find that if students can focus on those four things, that the end result ends up being a story that reveals a lot about you and what you'll bring to a college campus. And if you're working on the craft, a story that's written, that's well written. So students often feel like they have to write an essay. In order to write a good essay or have something to say, they have to have this monumental, earth-shaking experience in their lives. And often they'll feel like nothing ever happened to me. Um, do they have to have this, you know, earth-shaking thing? Or can they write about things that are much more commonplace? I love that you're asking this because I know I think I have a sense of how you feel about this. So um, my answer to this is you can write a great story whether you've faced challenges or not. And whether you know, some students think they also have to talk about what they want to study. And you can write a great story whether you, whether you know what you want to be or do in the future or not. And so I think that one of the, one of the let me give the opposite advice. So sometimes people will give the advice, writing teachers will say, focus on a particular moment. But I find that even that is not necessarily great advice, meaning, you know, let focus on, uh, I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head, like, you know, don't focus on the whole season, but focus on the moment in the game where this thing changed for you. I find that whatever a student is writing about, that moment or that particular thing has to come back to what did, how did it affect you and what did you, you know, what did you learn from it? Um, why were you in this situation in the first place? So if students do choose to write about a particular moment, it doesn't have to be a, a huge life shattering you know, moment, certainly there are those students who write about those things and that, that can be a compelling story. But you know, some of the, my favorite essays, uh, one was by a student who watched his grandmother making kimchi and talks about her hands and the way that she uh, did that. Uh, another student that I worked with had uh, loved travel and he loved languages. And he just wrote about how travel and languages had impacted him in his life. So what I would say for students who have, don't have challenges or that one life-changing experience, is they'll need to find a, a common theme or focusing lens that will tie together all the different aspects of themselves. And the way that they can generate all the different aspects, there are a few different ways. One is to just, on a blank sheet of paper, make a list of you know, everything that you want the college to know about you. I call it the everything I want colleges to know about me list. And you can do this with your parents, you can do this you know, at Starbucks in an hour. Uh, and, uh, and the other thing you can do is, I love to make this, this is, sounds similar, but it's a little bit different, it's the 21 details list. So give me 21 just random facts about you. Mm -hmm. And I find I learn more from students from this list than almost any other brainstorming exercise I do. Uh, a couple examples from my life, uh, let's see, 21 details. Um, I moved 20 times growing up, um, which could, if you're a counselor listening, go, oh, I'd be interested in hearing about what that did to you. Um, I, um, I'm a happy person. I've never seriously contemplated suicide. Um, and uh, my brothers and I have never fought, as far as I can tell. And I am uh, un. I, I, I'm obs I probably spent more time on a basketball court than anywhere else. That's something that you may not know about me. Um, so, so those are some 21, those are four details about me. But if you get students going like, okay, what, what's something weird? It can help answer that question of what what will help you stand out. It can also lead to a kind of interesting additional info section. So sometimes, and we don't want to go crazy there, but sometimes you see in a, in a student's 21 details list the, the common theme of like, you started a lot of little businesses, and I know that this isn't in your activities list, but like talk to me about your entrepreneurial side. So it can either lead to a common app main essay, or it can lead to some interesting fun facts for the additional info section. Again, I, I just want to emphasize it's important to, to contextualize the, the stuff in the additional info section so it doesn't just seem like, Blah, 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 blah. you know here's all this other right. stuff right. but here are some things that do not appear in my activities list that that demonstrate my entrepreneurial spirit right and i think that's really important for students to understand is that who they are is beyond their activities or the classes they take or things like that and um, different aspects of that. Um, you know, in terms of looking at different kinds of essays, I had a student one time who wrote about a chance meeting. It probably lasted 30 seconds, mm -hmm. but that was her whole essay. So it, it's, it's, as you said, it's a looking at the essays, looking at the topics, and creating those connecting the dots, and what did I learn, and how did I grow, and the what if, you know, why is that important? The, yeah, you're, I think you're so right, Cindy, especially I resonate with what you're saying about connecting the dots, because I think that sometimes students will 
in order to fill the 650 words, focus a little bit too much on the thing itself. So mm -hmm. yep. in the 30 second experience essay, certainly you could spend 650 words talking about the whole experience, but that narrative is only, I think, interesting in so much as it's in the context of this larger thing that it reveals about you. One of the things I say to students is that your topic is not your topic, meaning your topic is not the 30 second experience, your topic is you. What right. can you tell me about you? How can you use the topic to dig in to tell me more about you? I like saying that to students because it catches their attention. They're like, what do you mean my topic isn't my topic? You're not writing about baseball. You're not writing about soccer. You're not writing about violin. You're writing about you. How is baseball? Is base? And, and, and one answer to the question, what if, have I chosen a good topic is, uh, is my topic elastic enough? Meaning, is it stretchy enough to talk about all my different core values? And can I be vulnerable here? And, you know, can I find moments of insight? Because if the topic is, you, you might kind of feel pressure to talk about a certain thing, but it might not be your thing, you know? Uh, I'm working with a student now whose brother has special needs, and I asked her early on, I said, you know, actually, I asked her two sessions in, I said, do you, do you feel like this is really your, your thing? Because I know it's something that you kind of came in with. And as she did some brainstorming, she's like, yeah, you know, I know that there are other students that are going to be writing about brothers and sisters with special needs, but this really feels connected to a lot of different parts of me. And I could just hear in her voice, I was like, great, let's, let's, let's go for this. So you can kind of tell, it's like where, how deep does it go into you uh, in terms of the topic? It's kind of a touchy feely thing, but it's, you know, you, you, you figure it out. I think you figured out a few drafts in if this is your topic or not. Right, right, absolutely. And sometimes there are topics that are pertinent for the students, but they're not re yet ready to write about them too. That's a great point. So, uh, so you know, I've gone through that. So prob getting started is probably the hardest part for students in terms of writing their essays. And you've already given a few tips. What other tips can you have for helping us as counselors, especially my, my class, uh, they're new at this, they may be working with students or um, just starting on that path. What type of other tips do you give for getting students through that blank page stage? Yeah. Can I talk about resources that I've created for that? You absolutely okay. can. Because I, I was like, man, I've thought a lot about this. Uh, so I created a one hour guide to the, the to writing your essay. It's free. It's on my website, collegeessayguy.com. And the, ba the way it starts is with these two simple exercises that take about 15 minutes. And I've got a lot of counselors who just send their kids to the site and go, here, go there for half an hour and come back after you've read, after you've done the exercises and, you know, looked at the sample essays. So the way it begins is with the simple question of, you know, what would be your essence objects? And this is a nice way, I think, of getting students to think about the concrete, tangible things in life that represent their deeper essences. Because if a student tries to write about an, an abstract concept like uh, adaptability, the essay can be a little swimmy sometimes. So I ask them to think about these qualities they value and to, to put them into concrete objects. You know, what object represents your adaptability? Because that can be a great way of, of leading the reader in. And also, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a way they're creating these, like, they're basically putting down these coded objects. And the, the, the writing process as a counselor, you know, you'll help the student think about what these objects mean to them. But they're basically, they're being vulnerable on the page, even though you, one may not be able to look at it at first glance. It creates a lot of stuff, a lot of content for, for discussion uh, in, that, in those initial brainstorming sessions. And then the second exercise is a simple two-minute values exercise. What are your top 10 values? And that's a really cool one to really go quickly, okay, what do you stand for? It's like, okay, I got to, and I, I kind of do that on a timed version to get students really thinking about that. So those two I, I find are pretty efficient for generating a, lot, a menu of topics. But my favorite new one that I'm starting to work with is, is called the feelings and needs exercise. And this is particularly good for students who've been through challenges. But as you mentioned earlier, Cindy may not have processed, or as I like to call it, metabolized the experience a lot. And, and this is a great one for counselors too. So I recommend counselors go and try this one out. If you Google college essay guy feelings and needs exercise, you'll have a little 11 minute video. And it basically all you need is a blank sheet of paper and it walks you through based on a challenge. And by the way, students who sometimes identify as not having been through significant challenges, what I'm finding with this exercise, there's something about it, about the way that it's asked when students are forced to write some challenge down that about 80% of the students that I've worked with go, Oh, I do have a challenge that I could work through. And essentially, here's my pitch for this exercise. I feel like there are a lot of questions we could ask students in terms of helping them to generate an essay. I think these are the six best questions in terms of dealing with challenges. And I think in terms of taking a student from zero to outline in like 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes. 
And it's so, I'm excited because I think it's really, it's working so far. I've, I've, you know, shopped it around to like, you know, eight or 10 schools and students almost invariably, I ask who's got a top, who's got an essay they could write after it and they, they raise their hands. So I, I'd really encourage people to check that one out. That one, it's in the middle of my book, but it's kind of hidden because I didn't come up with it until later. So it's kind of like, I, I just told, uh, Ryan from the Princeton Review a few few weeks ago I was like, hey, if you only read 20 pages from this book, check out the feelings and needs part. It's called how to make your essay like deep. And I think that's another it's another answer to the question of how do I how do I add depth and complexity to an essay that might otherwise kind of be on the surface. So when is your book? I know you've been writing a book through and it's going to be published by Sourcebooks, correct? Mm, totally. When yeah. does it come out? It comes out July 1st. Yay! Yeah, I know. It's like two weeks away. So I'm super excited. And uh, yeah, it's available for pre-order. And it's fun. It's, it's, it's really fun. to. I have it right here, actually. Um, we have like copies around the house. It's, it's so funny to see that this thing that was in my head for like 10 years is like now is a thing with like width and depth and like, and there's like an actual weight to it. So it, it, it's weird to look at it. And my wife was like, you wrote all these words. And I'm like, I wrote some of these words. There are a lot of student essays in here. So uh -huh. I definitely had a lot of help. Um, but um, but it's, it's so exciting and fun. And it's exciting to be like, you know, and someone's like, do you have any essay advice? I'm like, yep, it's right here. There's 240 pages of it. And it's, it's pretty, I, I think it's pretty efficiently put together. Meaning, you know, a student doesn't have to, or a counselor doesn't have to read through the whole thing. They can kind of pick and choose. You know, at the beginning, I had this uh, little list of questions of things that this book answers. You know, which, how much sharing is too much? How do I revise my essay? How do I make my essay not boring? How can I start my essay? So I tried to think ahead to, you know, if I were a student just wanting to find out a particular answer to a question, where, you know, how could I just skip ahead? So it's kind of got a, uh, you know, a, a choose your own adventure feel. So. I think, yeah. So I will definitely put that on my list of recommended resources for our students. So um, I think that's, that'll be such a great guide, not only for counselors but also for students and parents as well Thank you. so one last question and then um then we're going to find out how people can reach you directly but one of the most popular questions especially on the common app or the probably the upcoming coalition app is why x college you know why did you pick many times students haven't visited the colleges that they're applying to so if I have not been to the campus what do you recommend that I do in order to write my YX school essay Great. I love this question so take a tip from Emery who once asked and I don't know if they're gonna ask it again in this way but they said besides our location weather amazing faculty and there were a couple of things they listed why do you want to go to Emory and I just thought what a great way to set students up for thinking in unusual and interesting ways, and also a great way to set up their admissions office for stopping having to read those same essays again and again. So I tell every student to take that advice, to, to, to please don't write about student and faculty ratio, you know, uh, you know, please don't write about, you know, how you visited and the sun was shining. Like, do make two columns, and in one column, so think of this as like a, one of the misconceptions, I think an, an interesting way of thinking about this, is students think of it as a why us, like the college is asking why, why do you want to come to us, like we are the college, but I think of it as more of a why us, so the student and the school are separate, why do we make, why do we match, um, as though, it's almost like you're on a second or third date, and someone's asking, well, why do you like me, you know, you can't just say, well, you're hot, you know, I guess you could, <laughs> but that's kind Wouldn't of, take a, you very far, would it? If that's kind of obvious, and if it's kind of obvious, like, and everybody else is being like, well, that person is really pretty, or, you know, that person's really handsome, then it's kind of like, okay. But you're right, it wouldn't take you very far. Instead, find, make two columns. This is your preparation for the date. And here are all these amazing things about me, and here are all these amazing things about you. Now, this part is going to come from the brainstorming exercises that you've done, and this part's going to come from research. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot you can do to research, and I'll, I'll share a resource in a second. But essentially, you're still making the case for the relationship and why we should be together, why we are destined to be together. And so you can write this one of two ways. One is you can find a cool opportunity at the school uh, for a particular internship or a particular study abroad program or a particular club and go, ooh, that's just like this other thing within me. Now, maybe in your brainstorming, you haven't put that in your column yet, but great, that's a great thing to look for. Or you're really interested, and you know the things that you're interested in, so you can kind of do it that, the way that I just said. Um, but essentially, you're, you're basically going back and forth, back and forth. And you can put in more reasons than you think. So in 250 words, I've seen students put in like 14 reasons. Now, that's not the only way to do it, because it could be that you just 
like Bowdoin has a very particular type of Y S essay, just for example. So you could just focus on one particular thing. But then the, I think that essay is harder to do. And I think you have to be a really good writer in order to pull that one off. I think you can be just an okay writer and have a lot of information in there. And when I say information, just know that every time I say it, I'm saying core values. So each of these things that you're connecting to, use that values list to ask yourself, okay, but is this revealing just kind of a superficial fact about me or is it revealing one of my core values? Because I think even in your Why Us essay, you can still find ways to work that information in. If you Google how to write a Why Us essay, <laughs> I have a three-part post where I've said a lot of stuff about this. Um, and I wrote 20 pages on this, like a little PDF. So I'm, I'm, I have lots to say about it and, and, and lots of examples and, and that I'm happy to share. And, then, and just so everybody knows, like all the resources on my website are free or pay what you can. So if anybody can't afford anything on the site, you know, I just say send a quick email to assistant at collegeessayguy.com and you'll get it for free. Or, you know, he'll, my, it's my brother you know, who's my assistant. And usually he'll just be like, great, how much do you want to pay? So I really, that's a really legit offer. One of my core values is access. And so I want everybody to be able to access the materials and uh, so far that's really working because I've got this voiceover gig that's keeping me, uh, it's supporting me. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, good. Well, hopefully we'll be able to send you lots and lots of students that will be able to, because I know they really appreciate and enjoy your webinars and the, the counsel and the guidance and uh, the workshop that you offer. So, well, and, yeah, thank you. And it's, it's, this is, like you said, so this is totally my passion. It's, it's, it's a really funny kind of niche thing to love to do, but it's, you know, and I'm really open to collaborating and talking with people. So I love when people email me and they're like, oh, I tried this and this worked in this way, or have you thought about this? I love, I love hearing from people too. So how do they reach you? Where do they reach you at? Ethan? Super easy. You just go to collegeessayguide.com. There's a little contact form. It's real easy. You can email me through that. It's, it's super simple. Sounds uh, great. Yeah. Sounds great. We'll put, I'll put that on um, the, the link for the video too. So thank you yeah. so much for your time this morning. I know it was very early <laughs> and on a Friday morning. So I fun. very much appreciate it. So yeah. Thank you, Cindy. I really appreciate you. And thank you for all that you give and contribute to this industry. You were thanking me, but I do know that you've, you've, you've been here doing this for, for years and I, I just really value you as a, as a colleague. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you very much. I, it, has, it is my passion. Um, you know, as a first generation person, you know, this is, I know education is the key to the future. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.